Hello, my name is Lorene Yandrup, and I'm here to teach you about bubbling and highlighting. Um, this is a, a method that I came up with in teaching myself and preparing myself for taking uh, the National Coding Board exams. Um, it is now a trademarked um, term that's exclusive to the use of myself and my company and its licensees. And it is definitely an integral part to how we teach. And it's designed to help the student, the coding student, be able to view the CPC um, manual and group things so that visually they can make a comparison to neighboring codes and pick the best code for the situation that they're trying to code. Now, um, what's great about this method is that, you know, when you're taking a long course, like we have an 80-hour course, and it's it's pretty intensive there's lots of exercises there's lots of homework there's tests this is something that can be done when your your energy levels are lower and you know you can just sit and take your book out and create these bubbles and highlight um, everything that comes after the to the semicolon so I'm going to show you some examples um, using my document camera of my coding manual and let me pull that up hang on okay so this is of the surgery section um, in the CPT manual and it's on page 59 if you're using the 2012 professional version and you'll notice that the categories are in red this year skin subcutaneous and accessory structures then we have these categories in blue incision and drainage and then debridement on this page so part of this method and I recommend that you use pencil when creating your bubbles just in case you make a bubbling error and um, you need to erase they do not need to be super prominent um, the bubbling is just a visual guide and so actually pencil is is actually perfect for this because um, it, it groups it without it being um, too much uh, in your face so to speak so here we have let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit And you can see here that we've got 10040 for acne surgery. And this one is called a standalone code because there's no semicolon, there's nothing indented underneath it. So we really, for part of the bubbling and highlighting technique, don't need to do anything with standalone codes. Now this next uh, bubble, 10060 and 61, is a bubble because there's this indentation. So 10060 is what I call the parent code, and you'll notice this semicolon, simple or single, and then the indented code, complicated or multiple. This is a space-saving convention used by the publishers so that they don't have to repeat this whole part to the left of the semicolon, which is known as the common portion of the code. So the reason I have you highlight what comes after the semicolon is it's a visual cue that this part, complicated or multiple, replaces simple or single to make this a complete statement. So if you were to be writing a report and you wanted to include the full definition of 10061, you wouldn't simply type complicated or multiple, you would type incision and drainage of abscess, um, carbuncle, suppurative hydronitis, cutaneous or subcutaneous abscess, cyst, furuncle, or parunchia, semicolon, complicated or multiple. Okay, so it takes the common portion and puts it to the left of this highlighted. So basically, everything that's indented is highlighted. Okay, and now, now we've bubbled this. 10080 is another bubble. We've got after the semicolon simple, so we highlight that, and complicated is the indented code. And normally, besides it being obviously indented, you can tell because it will be presented in lowercase unless it's like an ep eponym or uh, a name of something that is supposed to be capitalized. What I also like for you to do is to pull in any parenthetical notes that go along with that bubble. I'd say 99% of the time, parenthetical notes go with the codes that preceded it. Not always, and that's why I have you use pencil when you're doing bubbling um, because sometimes you might find when you actually get down to studying that particular section that ah, I should have included these with the bubble you know below it or above it and you can make those changes so let me scooch this page down here 
Okay, so we've got 10120 and 10121 with these two parenthetical notes bubbled in. I did not include 10140 because it is not indented. It starts a new code series, or in this case, a standalone code. Okay, so basically, in the in the category incision and drainage, we've got one standalone code followed by three bubbles followed by three standalone codes. So let's just focus on the bubbles right now. Um, and this is this is how I teach. When your book is all marked up, bubbled and highlighted, and then we get to these pages, they'll say, okay, let's talk about incision and drainage in the integumentary system. What is the difference between the 10060 bubble and the 10080 bubble? And this is where you'll start underlining or using a different highlighter to um, mark up the difference between the bubbles. So in this case, 10060 is an abscess. It's an IND of an abscess, but the 80 is of a pilonidal cyst. That's the difference. Those are the buzzwords you're gonna be looking for in your documentation. Now, I do recommend, as well as pencil to, to create your bubbles, use the same color highlighter, like pale yellow is my favorite, for doing the highlighting of everything to the right of the semicolon, okay? Reserve your other colors, pink, green, blue, purple, for highlighting other keywords that you want to stand out. Because if you highlight everything in the same color, um, it'll, it'll kind of lose its um, emphasis for you. When you see pale yellow, you'll know what it is. When you see the, the nice light pencil line, you'll know that's a, the bubble. But other keywords you want to jump out at you, either underline them or highlight them in a, in a different color so they do jump out, okay? And then our third bubble, was an incision and removal of a foreign body. So we can quickly see the differences between these three groups when you're looking at your multiple um, choice answers. If it's a board exam question or, um, or a test or exercise, you'll be able to quickly um, see what the difference is and read your documentation and abstract the information you need to pick the correct code. Okay, now let me show you another example was of the integumentary system. Let me show you one using the digestive system here. And here's the full page. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. So you can see in red, we've got lips, we've got vestibule of the mouth. And now you can see how it's all bubbled and I start adding notes. Bubbling and highlighting is the prep work you do uh, normally prior to the lecture. And then at the lecture, you'll be given extra notes and what keywords to underline, etc. So when you're just sitting down in front of the TV and you're going to do some bubbling and highlighting, you know, work, um, you know, you don't have to worry about the notes at that point. Um, that's why I recommend you get your book all prepped and then do the lecture part. All right, let me zoom in on this. Okay, so we can see here. We've got in the excision section or, or uh, category, we've got one bubble, excision of lip, okay, and a couple standalone codes. And then I just started, you know, um, I highlighted everything after the semicolon. Hopefully you can see that on the video. Uh, very pale yellow. And then I under, underlined the, the key buzzwords to help me figure out what is the difference within the bubble. Under uh, this repair category, um, we've got a first bubble, 650 to 654, so it's three codes in one bubble, and everything's highlighted after the semicolon. And then we've got the 40700 bubble, which is a fairly big one. It includes a bunch of parenthetical notes, okay? And then what's the difference be between the 650 and the 700 bubble? This one is repair of lip for full thickness. This one is a plastic repair of cleft lip or nasal deformity. So you can quickly, you know, if you know that you're you're not dealing with the cleft lip or nasal deformity, you can just ignore this whole bubble and focus on this one and then figure out which code you should pick within the bubble. That's why this is a very, very helpful um, method. So that is the, the art to bubbling and highlighting. Um, let me see if, just to show you a few more, you know, pages of how this works. So here, I've got the 41000 compared to the 41015 intraoral versus extraoral, and I'll write these little keywords. So, so picture now sitting on the board exam, and you know, having this helping you jumps right out at you. Intra versus extra, you know what to look for 
in your, um, your, your question or your scenario. In real world coding, it helps because you will typically get to the right category and you'll look at all the codes in the category and pick the best one for your situation. And seeing the, the key words will help you make that uh, determination. So that is bubbling and highlighting. I hope that um, helps you. If you have any questions about it, let me know, Laureen at codingcertification.org, and I wish you well in your continued studies.